Hi everyone, welcome back to another Econ with Jack mini-sode. If you've been reading the news, it seems like every day there's been another article on the US inflation rate. I personally have been finding it all a bit overwhelming, so to help us better understand what is going on, let's break down what inflation is and what our rates from last year mean. So inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. And this is reflected in the increase of an average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in an economy over some period of time. In simple terms, that means how much everything else around us is getting more expensive and as a result, how much less our money can now buy. For example, if you have one dollar and a loaf of bread costs 50 cents, you can buy two loaves of bread. Okay, 50 cents for each loaf, one dollar, two loaves. That's great. But if inflation rises by 100%, firstly, we would all descend into chaos and probably have some food wars. But secondly, the same bread will now cost $1 instead of 50 cents. The price will have doubled. And that same dollar that you had earlier can now only buy one loaf of bread. So your purchasing power with the same amount of money has now been cut into half because of the increase in price. Some countries have experienced such high inflation rates that their money became worthless. For example, in Zimbabwe in the late 2000s, inflation reached hyperinflation levels, with prices doubling every 24 hours. As a result, people rushed to spend all of their money before goods became even more expensive, and this only worsened the problem, with monthly inflation rates rising to over 600%. Today, Zimbabwean money is nearly worthless. On the opposite side, some countries may experience what is known as deflation, which is when the purchasing power of money increases and prices decline. Inflation is usually caused by a country printing more money than is justified by the country's wealth. As a result of more dollars being in circulation for a limited amount of assets, the value of each dollar then decreases. So is inflation good or bad? Well, that depends, and it's a bit tricky. Inflation is viewed as positive when it helps boost consumer demand and consumption, and this can be a signal of economic growth. However, inflation should neither be too high nor too low for any given fiscal year. A healthy level of inflation as set by the Federal Reserve is around 2 to 3% per year. However, last year for 2021, our average inflation rate was 6.8% which is both higher than our ideal threshold and also the highest it has risen since 1982, as reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Dun dun dun. So there are actually three different types of causes for inflation. And these are demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, and lastly built in inflation. Starting with the first one, demand pull inflation, refers to situations where there are not enough products or services being produced to keep up with demand. This causes the prices to increase. Cost push inflation, on the other hand, occurs when the cost of producing products and services rises, forcing businesses to raise their prices. And lastly, built-in inflation, sometimes referred to as a, quote, wage price spiral, unquote, occurs when workers demand higher wages to keep up with rising living costs. This, in turn, causes businesses to raise their prices in order to offset their rising wage costs, leading to a self-reinforcing loop of wage and price increases. The cause of this past year's inflation has been attributed to a variety of factors, including labor shortage, shortages in the supply chain, backed up supply chains, and an increase in demand from shoppers. Hence, we would categorize this as a demand pull inflation. And this is concerning for consumers because if wages do not increase along with the increase in prices for goods and services, technically you are getting a pay cut each year due to the sheer decrease in buying power of the dollar. And this has risks of leading to a potential wage price spiral inflation. The areas that have increased the most in the United States this past year are food, gas, housing, and healthcare. So 
At this point, you're hopefully wondering, what do we do? There may not be a direct way to stop or reduce inflation, but there are things that we have done in the past to try to help. And by we, I mean the Federal Reserve, which is the central banking system of the United States. They use several policy strategies in an attempt to reduce inflation. The first of which is a form of monetary policy through creating higher interest rates. By setting higher interest rates on loans, this increases the cost of borrowing money and thus discourages spending. As a result, less money is in circulation, leading to lower economic growth and lower inflation. Next, we can tighten fiscal policy. This means that we would increase income taxes and or lower government spending. As a result of the increase in tax, consumers have less income, leading to less aggregate demand and eventually lower growth and less inflation. Finally, there is a supply side policy, which aims to increase long-term competitiveness by increasing deregulation, which may help reduce costs of businesses. There are a few other strategies that the Fed uses that we won't be discussing today, but the key to remember is that these are all just attempts at influencing the economy, and there's never a guarantee that it will solve our problems. I also want to note that there is a lot of disagreement right now in the news about if the Federal Reserve should step in to attempt to reduce inflation or to stay out and give the market space to recover itself. As a result, those of us invested in the stock market may have noticed that investments are starting to fall, and this is because of people selling off stocks in preparation for the Fed to take action. The situation in the United States has been stressful to say the least, but only time will tell what happens next. Until then, thank you for listening. Bye!